there. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much and thanks for your patience. Now I'm ready to start. Um, uh, so this talk will not be about control or optimization uh, at variance with the previous talks, but it will be about the statistical physics of transport uh, in uh, relation to dynamical systems. So indeed, the uh, title has already been mentioned. Uh, this is about diffusion and so-called uh, soft Lorentz gases. And this is in fact a PhD uh, work from my previous student, Sol Gilgalejos, in collaboration uh, with uh, the group around ESA Resenen from Finland. Okay, so uh, the talk consists of two parts. First, I will just briefly remind you of uh, the famous uh, Lorentz gas, in this case, the periodic one. And I will motivate the soft model that, uh, we, are, uh, that we studied. And uh, then the second part will be our study of the density dependent diffusion coefficient in a soft periodic Lorentz gas. So what we did were just computer simulations and our results will be explained by simple random walk approximations for the diffusion coefficient supplemented by an analysis in terms of periodic orbits. Now, just a brief reminder about the periodic Lorentz gas. So it's a very famous model introduced by uh, Henry Anton Lorenz in 1905. So more than a century ago, who actually introduced a uh, first random model. But the periodic one was also widely studied. Uh, there are tons of literature about that. It consists, as you can see here, of uh, um, hard disks of a certain radius, which we set to unity on a triangular lattice. So on each vertex of the lattice, you simply put a hard disk and this is fixed. And then you just uh, consider a point particle that collides elastically with all the scatterers. And here you have some sample trajectories. That's how it moves uh, between the scatterers. And uh, in this system, uh, as it is defined, the only non-trivial control parameter is the gap size, uh, which we denote by W. So this is uh, the minimal distance between two adjacent disks which is trivially related to the density of scatterers. Uh, uh, certainly the energy you set constant and this uh, provides a trivial scaling. And the periodic Lorentz gas is a famous paradigmatic example of what is called a chaotic Hamiltonian particle billiard. Indeed, there's famous work by Bunimovic and Sinai from the 80s, where it was proven uh, that this system uh, exhibits a positive Lyapunov exponent and furthermore, that in this system, there exists diffusion, at least in a certain range of W. The trivial case certainly is if there is no gap between two disks, then the part is trapped, diffusion coefficient will be zero. And then there's an upper bound, meaning if W is so large that you have a so-called infinite horizon, meaning a part can travel collision-free between all the disks, then the diffusion coefficient ceases to exist, then we have super diffusion. But between these two values, we have normal diffusion. So uh, a so-called diffusion coefficient that I will define in a moment uh, does exist. And now the question, uh, a question that you may pose for this model is, how does the diffusion coefficient for this model look like as a function of this control parameter W? And again, this is just a review of old work to set the scene. Uh, here you have the definition of the diffusion coefficient in the usual way. So you consider, say, an ensemble of particles. So the angular brackets denote an ensemble average over, say, n particles. And each particle starts at a certain initial position, r, a vector at time zero. And then you simply look at where the particle is, at which position it is at time t. You take the distance, you square it, and then you average over your ensemble. And if this mean square displacement increases linearly in time in the long time limit, then if you divide by t, so four is a dimensionality factor, then this limit will exist and it defines the diffusion constant d. And now you can perform simple computer simulations uh, to calculate d of w, so the diffusion coefficient as a function of the spacing w. And our computer simulation results actually from a paper from uh, 2000, or this is too far, uh, are represented by these crosses here connected by the line. And you see that the dependence looks fairly trivial, as you would expect that if you increase the gap size, then the diffusion coefficient increases. And indeed, the other dots here are results from, uh, 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 from uh, other literature uh, obtained by other colleagues. <laughs> 
Now, indeed, uh, what you also see here is a simple analytical approximation obtained by Marta and Zwanzig in a famous Fischer letter from 83. They uh, simply calculated the diffusion coefficient by a, a random walk approximation, which uh, is the following. You simply define traps. So here you have a trap, which is just the unit cell of this uh, periodic system. And the uh, dashed region here is the region where a particle can move. Certainly here that this, so the particle cannot move there. And now the approximation is just that uh, the particle jumps uh, without memory from trap to trap. So from here to here, to the next one, to the next one, to this one. And then the diffusion coefficient is approximated by a jump length for which we choose here just the distance between two trap centers. So the center of the trap here to the center of the trap here, we call it L. And then the diffusion coefficient is simply obtained as L squared. So the jump length divided by the escape rate, meaning the time that it takes a particle, the average time to, uh, for the particle to move out of one trap to the next one. This is simply the Machta 20 random walk approximation. And you can see that uh, if you compare it with the numerical data, it approximates the numerical results very well for small w, which makes sense because if uh, the w is very small, then the, it will take the particle a long time to escape out of a trap. That means you have many collisions and that means uh, a, a large, random, a strong randomization of the motion. And therefore, there, then there will be a little memory between the jumps and then you would expect this approximation to hold well. In fact, uh, it is asymptotically exact for small w. But you also see, and we will come back to that, that for larger w, it doesn't work. Though something else was claimed in the paper by Marta and Zwanzig, but if you really look carefully, you see there is a strong mismatch. And this is due uh, to the fact that there are correlated jumps between the traps. So they are not memoryless, but indeed uh, the particle may keep jumping in one direction from trap to trap. And therefore the real diffusion coefficient is much uh, larger than the one predicted by this approximation. So you see here an interplay between the dynamic exact results and simple random walk approximation. Now, uh, but the situation is even a bit more complicated because now if you take a closer look at this region of the diffusion coefficient for larger W here, you can do a blow up. And this was done in fact uh, in our, my paper with Christoph De Lago 20 years ago, meaning you simply fit this region with a linear line, with a line, with a linear function and calculate what we call residua here, meaning the deviations of the numerical diffusion coefficient from linear fit. And then indeed you see surprisingly that as a matter of fact in detail, this is not such a simple functional form. There is a non-monotonicity hidden in here, which is numerically real. So Christoph has performed very precise simulations. You see the error bars here. And indeed uh, the diffusion coefficient shows a little wiggle here in its functional form. And uh, this uh, we could not explain in detail, but indeed it is related to uh, the precise microscopic dyna dynamics we will come back to that uh, for the soft system that we're now going to consider. So there exist irregularities, meaning a fine structure of the diffusion coefficient. And now, indeed, uh, this is just sets the scene of the hard periodic Lorentz gas, meaning the Lorentz gas with hard scatterers. Now we ask the question, what happens to the parameter dependent diffusion coefficient if you soften the scatterers? And our motivation were recent results say on the fusion of electrons in artificial graphene. Uh, for example, you can really experimentally realize what's called molecular graphene, which is here represented by carbon uh, monoxide molecules on a copper surface. So you see that indeed here, the uh, carbon monoxide molecules form uh, nicely a triangular lattice and the electrons move uh, similar to the periodic Lorentz gas between the scatterers here. So this can be realized experimentally and electronic transport can be studied. And for that reason, we simply replaced the hard potential uh, of the original Lorentz gas by overlapping Fermi potentials. So this is a Fermi potential and it has two parameters. First of all, a softness parameter, sigma. And of course, as it is a Hamiltonian system, if a part, single particle moves in Fermi potentials, then we have the total energy E, which here becomes non-trivial due to the um, uh, non-trivial potential. So here you see a sketch of the system that we're studying. Again, we have Fermi potentials, overlapping Fermi potentials situated on a triangular lattice. 
as before, but now we have the soft potential. So here you see a cut to the potential landscape. And here indeed we varied the smoothness parameter. And the nice thing is that if you make sigma very small, if sigma goes to zero, then uh, this becomes a heavy side function, meaning you recover the hard potential, the original Lorentz gas, if you let the particle move for small enough energy such that it really collides between the scatters and does not move on top. And you can soften the potential now by increasing sigma. So uh, to be precise, we have three parameters in the system. Again, the gap size between two scatters, W, for a given energy E and the smoothness parameter. And now uh, we computed the diffusion coefficient depending on the gap size and the energy. Uh, and this uh, was done with a very nice software package developed by uh, my uh, Finnish colleagues. Indeed, they have a publication on this. The, the billiard to this software is available on the web and can be downloaded uh, by anyone who wants to play around with this. So we use their software package now to calculate this diffusion coefficient and here I only show your results for a constant energy by varying the W. So I choose a very small softness, sigma equal to 0 0.05 and a constant energy of one half where the particle does not go over the top of the potential. And this is the result for the diffusion constant as a function of the spacing. And, and, and in fact, other computer simulation results are represented by the blue dots here, by the blue line. And you see that surprisingly, this is not at all a simple functional form. On the opposite, uh, it is highly irregular. You see a lot of peaks and minima, local peaks and local minima. So this is the first surprising result that uh, the diffusion coefficient is a highly irregular function of W. And this is beyond numerical errors. This is a real numerical result and it can be understood in terms of physics and dynamical systems as I will explain to you. Secondly, you see two simple curves here. And indeed these uh, curves, I will explain to you how we calculated them. We call them a Boltzmann approximation, which is another simple random walk approximation that can be obtained analytically or numerically exactly. And uh, you see that if you forget about the wiggles, they reproduce the coarse grain functional form of the diffusion coefficient fairly well, but not uh, the fine structure. And uh, thirdly, you see that there are gray columns for certain parameter regions. <clears throat> and you see, uh, and indeed uh, these parameter regions, uh, uh, in these parameter regions, you do not have a diffusion coefficient. It doesn't exist because the system exhibits super diffusion, meaning the mean square displacement grows faster uh, than linear in time. Therefore, the diffusion coefficient does not exist. In fact, you also see labels here. I will explain them later uh, um, because uh, you will see that uh, these labels, by these labels, you can explain the local maximum and minimum. But you see altogether, this is a highly non-trivial curve that deserves some explanations which I will deliver now. So let me first explain the Boltzmann approximation uh, to you. This is very simple. Uh, similar to uh, before the Machta 20 random walk approximation, you define the diffusion coefficient via a length scale squared divided by a time scale. And here, uh, instead of the, uh, the distance between two trap centers for the Machta 20 approximation, it shows it as a length scale, what we call co the collision length. The collision length we define simply as the length, uh, average length between two collisions of a particle with the equipotential line of the system. So we have a certain energy and whenever the particle gets uh, the equipotential line of a scatterer, then we say there's a collision and we calculate the average time between two collisions. This defines LC and correspondingly tau C is the collision, average collision time. As a matter of fact, tor C can be easily calculated analytically uh, the same way uh, as Mach uh, Machta and 20 have calculated the escape time that we have seen before. I do not go into detail here, but it's a very simple geometric phase space argument by which tor C can be calculated analytically exactly. Now, LC can actually be eliminated uh, by defining an average velocity V as LC divided by tor C. And if we plug this in, then we just obtain the Boltzmann diffusion coefficient as v squared tau c divided by, by four. That means, again, tau c we can calculate exactly. We need to calculate v somehow. And for doing so, we are applying two approximations. So we uh, approximate, we calculate uh, the velocity when a particle leaves a trap. And whenever it is in the exit region of a trap, we can calculate v 
analytical by assuming that there's some average potential within the trap, again, without going into further detail, but uh, based on uh, Newton's equations of motion, we can also calculate V uh, uh, exactly, but this we cannot do analytically. Uh, we have to solve some integral numerically. And indeed, these two approximations yield the two lines that you have seen before. But here I show you just one line, namely the numerical Boltzmann approximation in comparison to the numerical results, so which is the green line here. And indeed, the blue line uh, shows a suitably adapted Machta 20 approximation, meaning one can also adapt this to a soft Lorentz gas, which we have done. And again, the black dots here are the numerically exact results based on the mean squared displacement. So now what we can see here is that uh, indeed the Boltzmann approximation explains uh, the whole cost grain functional form of the diffusion coefficient over the whole range of W fairly well, if you forget about the wiggles. But indeed, uh, if one is more precise, uh, you see it a little bit in this blow up here, the Machta 20 approximation turns out to be analytically exact for very small W. So altogether, one may argue that Okay, I mean, it matches here uh, in the regime of small w fairly well. And one may argue that there's a kind of crossover between the validity of the Machta 20 approximation for small w to the validity of the Boltzmann approximation for larger w. And indeed, one can argue, and I've done that in two papers that you see here, that this is in fact a general feature for diffusion in periodic dynamical systems, meaning that there's a crossover between two different random walk approximations that are as totally exact for large respectively small parameter values. So that means you can at least understand the coarse grain function form of the diffusion constant in terms of simple random walks, which is fine. But again, certainly you have no explanation for the wiggles. But now this comes next. Let's now have a look at the wiggles and let's look here at the labels. Because indeed uh, the label 3a and 3b corresponds uh, to these two orbits here, which you see here in these uh, configuration space floats. So meaning at this parameter value here, where you have 3a, you indeed have uh, islands of stability in phase space. Very, very small islands. They are extremely small and difficult to find, but they do exist and they correspond to ballistic periodic orbits. You see a particle wiggles around, but keeps moving in one direction. And here there's another example. And this is certainly well known. This is not a new result. Uh, it has, uh, is known for many decades uh, since work by Geiser and others, and Slavsky and others, that Hamiltonian systems may exhibit islands of stability, which if you have diffusive dynamical systems, yield to super diffusion. And therefore, whenever you have these type of periodic orbits, ballistic periodic orbits, then your normal diffusion coefficient doesn't exist. And uh, you have these spikes, uh, which correspond to local extrema. Our contribution, which is new here, is that, to my knowledge, we were the first ones to study in detail the parameter dependence of the diffusion constant and how the parameter dependent diffusion depends in detail on the variation here of the dynamics. I don't think that this is in the works of these guys here. This is, to all, all knowledge, new, so this very complicated curve. So furthermore, uh, in fact, I almost forgot, you also see that here there are two further labels, C and D, and you see that they approximately correspond to local minima in the curve. And indeed, uh, whenever you have these parameters, you have, uh, again, periodic orbits, but they are localized ones. Here you see this hexagon, and here you see a more, more localized, uh, more complicated hexagon. Again, they correspond to island of stabilities. So whenever you have these, then uh, the diffusion coefficient uh, is uh, diminished. So it decreases, so whenever you have local minima, then you have this type of periodic orbits that kind of suppress diffusion. So this is our explanation of the irregularities that you have two different types of orbits, ballistic ones and localized ones, and they either enhance or they decrease normal diffusion. And indeed, this will keep going on on finer and finer scales. And in fact, there is a very deep mathematical work by Dmitry Turaev and Berat Ramkedar from about 20 years ago they have actually uh, proved uh, that, uh, or in fact, uh, have to be more careful, uh, they have a mathematical conjecture that islands of stability are dense in the parameter space when you have a hard billiard that you uh, smooth in some way. And if you now carry this over to our results, 
that would imply that indeed uh, you would have here parameters uh, for which our diffusion coefficient is singular. So uh, you may conjecture that in detail this may indeed be a fractal curve where you have uh, irregularities on finer and finer scales and uh, superdiffusion on finer and finer scales, but uh, this remains to be shown more rigorously, but that's at least a related conjecture. Now, I, it seems that I still have, uh, oh, my time is almost up, right? Yeah, you have two more minutes, okay. That's, uh, that's fine. I skipped this, so you have complicated bifurcation scenarios. This is way more important because this is now a plot in the, in the parameter space of the system. So this is W and this is sigma, the smoothing parameter and the gap size. And whenever you have a blue dot or blue tongue, you have localized periodic orbits. Whenever you have red dots, you have ballistic periodic orbits. And you see that indeed uh, the parameters for which you have uh, localized or ballistic orbits form a very regular structure in the parameter space. And indeed uh, the diffusion coefficient that I have shown to you, let's just go back quickly here. This one is a cut through this parameter space at sigma equals 0 0.05. Here you cut through this parameter space and now you see that this seemingly highly regular diffusion coefficient actually that there's a very uh, regular underlying structure. Meaning whenever you uh, are in a blue tongue, uh, the diffusion coefficient goes down. Whenever you're in a red tongue, it goes up. So this irregular looking curve has in view of this one, a rather regular explanation. But to uh, uh, explain this diagram here, to my knowledge, uh, has not been uh, uh, done. So I tried to fit uh, these tongues with simple functional forms. I didn't succeed. So uh, to, uh, to construct a theory for this one remains a very open problem. I think uh, Dmitri Turaev has only a theory for very, very small sigma, where these uh, functional forms are linear, but for higher sigma, it's not known. So I skip uh, the last slide and rather finish up. So uh, the problem that we studied here was how does diffusion and genetic Kramer-Tolian particle barrier change by softening the walls? And our main result was that the diffusion coefficient under parameter variation is not at all trivial. On the opposite, it becomes a highly irregular curve by changing the parameter with regions of super diffusion. And the explanations were in terms of periodic orbits. So the fine structures related to their sensitivity under parameter variation. And certainly would be highly interesting to observe this in experiments. Now, if you want to read this up, what I've reported to you was just here, this PRL that was published last year. And if you're interested in the energy dependence of the diffusion constant, we have a second paper on this. Well, thank you very much for your attention.